is really showcasing the work of the local community groups and the NGOs, some private sectors that are committed and dedicated. They see things need to be done and they have started doing this work based on commitment and dedication. The United Nations, um, in conjunction with Jeff's Small Grants Program, they had a grant available um, to begin right, an e-waste program on the island. Um, the grant was really to get the program started. Um, we started the program um, and it has been challenging. Um, initially we used boys from the boys training school. One of the problems is that the, the, the process is very labor intensive and having to pay someone to process the sea waste, it would not be cost effective. It definitely would not be a, a, a good business venture. But from our um, studies, we learned that when these components get into the landfill, it causes cancer if it gets into the water supply. And if it's incinerated, it causes a whole host of complications in the air. So we decided that um, not only would we be um, doing the program, but we decided that there would be a zero e-waste um, policy where we would actually not allow any of the components to get to the landfill. We got a real boost with everyone bringing in their e-waste to the, to the center. Um, we actually did a spread in the observer. Um, we really bombarded um, educating the masses as to the danger of the e-waste and it worked. And um, we had someone going into the schools um, because we figured that the children can get to the parents. And that worked a lot because we had parents come um, with their youngsters and they literally brought their e-waste. Um, it may have seemed insignificant, but you had children coming in and say, well, I've got some phones here. <laughs> okay. and so it worked. Well, the government has a temporary employment program and it's valuable to us. They provide labor and um, they also pay the employees. So that's ideal for what we do. Um, we got invaluable labor. And um, we also taught them, um, not only did they learn to dismantle the computer, but they learned a lot about computers. And um, it was one of actually the, the favorites of the program that they're doing with the, a lot of them wanted to come to this program specifically. Okay. We're now trying to upscale the project. We need a home, we need a warehouse. And Minister Joseph has taken um, a proposal to cabinet to give the EWA Center a, a warehouse. We've also applied to the Japanese government for a grant um, to upscale the project. As you can see, a big part of what we get when we process the e-waste is large plastics, large metal that are actually worthless. But again, we cannot send it to the landfill. So the challenge now is to crush this and shred the plastics and see what we can get for it but we've got to get it off the island um, the Japanese government has promised to give us enough so that we can actually get the equipment that will allow us to do the crushing and the processing we have companies in the States that has prom promised us some very high returns on the components if it's done properly it can be it can keep the US out of the landfill and sustain itself $45 yeah. It's a lot of work trying over things, you know, digging on the things. Yes. So I can't come up with any solution saying yes, that yes. a help will be near yes, shot. Yes. You understand? Getting rid of the you would know, regenerate in the business. I decided to see what use I could do it. And um, after playing around various, various means here, 
um, I discovered the distillation and I looked for a plant which I located a company in the States, PESCO, to build a plant that could do it. I really could do it support because okay. it costs more to do it than um, now what you're I getting can, from the little sales. From sales of fuel and asphalt. Mr. Han, he started, I don't know if he told you, he started everything on his stove at home. I actually came on with him in September of 07 and the plant wasn't quite completed. Like pipes were still there to be done and the building yeah, yeah, wasn't quite yeah. completed. So, And it was something new for me. All my life before there was airplane maintenance. Our process, we take a thermal fluid, a synthetic based fu fluid or oil, and we heat up that. Okay? When that heats up, that in turn heats up what we bring in from yeah. outside. That thermal fluid alone for just a barrel of that alone is probably 3500 US. We run that thermal fluid to probably about 650 degrees Fahrenheit. A special seal is on the pump and just the seal alone, not the pump, not the motor, nothing else to do with it. That seal alone is about 8000 US. And we have gone through quite a few. If something happens and you get an alarm or whatever, okay. we can say, okay, look, you know, we know exactly where to go. The company Pesco that did the plant, this is probably the smallest one they've ever done. They have quadruple what this can do. I mean, we are 50 liters an hour to process. Yeah, they, these guys have plants 2,500 US gallons per hour. Just whatever you see out here, it'll just be probably ginormous the size of what we have. Our best part of it, because one of our byproducts is the bitumen, okay. and we sell it back to government to do like secondary roads, yeah, okay. and that's where the money is really. Okay. The other byproduct we get is like a we take the black dirty oil and we bring it back to what's called like a virgin oil, uh -huh. and we cut that back with jet fuel and we sell it as diesel. We've had it tested in Trinidad a few times. Uh -huh. It is probably on par with what you can get out of the pump but it's just darker in color. All our vehicles including the pickup I drive, all the trucks back holes, we've been running our stuff from the start. What's the vision for waste management in Antigua? We don't see it as burying waste down at Cooks. We see it as a circular system where the waste can be reused, it can be repurposed, we can get small industries out of this waste but it starts with a population mindset it starts with the separation of waste at the household level Antigua and Barbuda Waste Recycling Corporation opened its doors in November 2005 as a project of the Rotary Club of Antigua Sundown in collaboration with uh, the National Solid Waste Management Authority, uh, the Central Board of Health, uh, the Environment Division and, uh, and the Investment Authority. And since then we have had several you know, highs and lows uh, beginning with uh, the, the support of solid waste uh, doing our full-time manager, uh, secretary, and some assistants with uh, about three soldiers. Uh, that changed, and we fell back into uh, trying to get what we need to get done: the sorting of the materials, the pre-processing, and the exporting of the materials. Uh, left to do that solely on the resources of what the materials is making. So that in itself uh, is not sustainable. So again, staff went down, um, laying off took place, that took place actually at least two or three times uh, in the 10 years, 11 years since uh, the plant has been open. The international market, the value for the materials has dropped dramatically, particularly after 2008. And uh, we haven't been getting any subsidizing assistance locally. So our backs are really against the wall. The, play, the plant had to shut its doors a couple of times. Uh, Fortunately, right now, uh, there's one permanent guy here and uh, a gentleman assisting him along with a, a subcontractor. And the board is presently still in negotiation or talks with um, 
our Minister of Health uh, regarding how the recycling in Antigua should move forward. We have exported over 5.5 million pounds of material, diverting that away from our own sanitary landfill here. And uh, compared to what impact that would have had on the landfill, it's, it's actually immeasurable. Uh, the plastic bottles that primarily uh, are exported from here, the breaking down, the shredding, the pre-processing and the exporting, uh, these are non-biodegradable materials going to the landfill. Um, they take five, six hundred years actually to decompose if they do that. And uh, this is the main focus of the Antiguan Barbuda Waste Recycling Corporation. Reaching a goal of zero waste by 2025, this requires all hands on board, government, NGO, the private sector coming together with a mission towards zero waste. So what we did, we have here on island with us a UNDP team working in partnership with TNO which is based in Aruba and they offered to the Department of Environment a week of technical support. So they're here on island and we visited the local initiatives aimed at waste diversion, recycling, and what came out is that these local initiatives are driven by people with a lot of concern and their passion using their own finances to keep the initiatives alive. We picked up so many things from them that are really invaluable and especially for me, um, even though we're talking about the area of waste, just picking up things from them, we were able to integrate some of the things that we're going to be doing in waste management into another very pressing issue in Antigua, which is conserving our biodiversity and our ecosystems. So they came at a, a real opportune time to give us a lot of, of help. My name is uh, Chris Katz. I'm uh Working for TNO Caribbean, and I'm uh, based on Bonaire, while the headquarters of TNO Caribbean is uh, on Aruba. Um, all by myself, uh, traveled here on uh, Sunday, and had um, were very fortunate actually to bring this uh, technical assistant visit to uh, Antigua. Uh, the first two days, we got to see uh, a lot of the island, visited uh, quite some stakeholders, and um, the two days following to those um, field visits were actually the workshop. Um, we came here not really knowing what to expect and um, uh, as TNO we were working on quite some islands in the Caribbean, we're working also in South America. We have uh, our main office in, uh, in Holland with more than uh, two and a half thousand people working there. Um, so we have quite some experience and expertise in waste management but what we learned over the last years working here in the Caribbean and in South America, but mainly on the on the islands, is that a lot of the islands have similar problems, um, and it's not so straightforward to just um, solve the problems on um, waste management level. So you have to look at the island scale. You have to look at many factors like culture, history, um, but also um, what really goes to the landfills to come up with a suitable solution for every particular island. And sometimes you can do a lot on the island itself. Uh, and that's what, you, that's what we saw uh, in all the good initiatives that are already running, uh, full, um, fulfilled with passion. Um, but they're also relatively small. And and not really self-supporting. So that's a challenge to keep um, them, them up and running and also um, let them or make them survive for the, for the future. We have been very impressed about the commitment and the number of initiatives that are in this island. So that's very impressive. And I think the training has been actually bringing a platform for people to share their inputs, to be more, yeah, to be open mind and look to the initiatives that are being done by their, uh, by other people in Aruba, sorry, in Antigua, <laughs> but also out of Antigua to get new input and for them to, to share the point of view, get commitment and realizing that bringing forces together, uh, discussing things from different point of views and 
getting into decisions are the first step and to go far in the waste management. We have come together and we have decided that going forward we have to form ourselves into a coalition, a national NGO. And we have started the process. Our documents are in the intellectual property office right now and the group is being chaired by Elliot Lincoln and I with the Jeff Smart Grants program I'm doing my best to make connections, building partners that we can go forward.